Hello fellow leggers, you are joining us in North London at the Pleasance. Uh, right. At the Pleasance Theatre. That's because we are seeing Night of the Living Dead Live. <laughs> did you did you get the, Not the clues? Not alive though, undead. Undead. Yeah. Okay, so stick around to hear all of our thoughts. Yeah, find out how many stars and whether it's break a leg. Or, or leg it. it. a bit of a horror this evening. It's rare that we get to see horror. Yeah, and I mean, full stage. disclosure, guys, I hate horror. I don't watch horror films. I don't like violence. I'm I love really horror. funny. I but love we violence. have seen quite disturbing <laughs> theatrical pieces before, and I think it's something to do with the bows. Like, they come back at the end, and it's all fine. But in a film, you don't get that. So it's then to steer clear. I'm very sensitive, believe it or not. Really? So when you're watching a film, you think it's really happening? What are, what I are don't films, know what my what, brain is doing, the name but of the I genre just can't. Where it's cope. actual pain? What is what is that? You think it's a like um, torture film? Like yeah, what is it? Snuff What's, films? Yeah, you think that maybe? Was all horror I don't films know where the boundaries are. I just get freaked out. Uh, you know out. they're just actors, right? Apparently so. But we're here to see George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead tonight, okay? Um, which is running here until mid-May at the Pleasance Theatre, North London. Now it's a comedic tribute to the historic 1960 film of the same name which is said to have launched the zombie genre and is considered iconic amongst its horror film peers okay so this is more of a comedy well I think it's, it's sort a of a, comedy, like right? it's slightly satirical like a play on the fact that it's quite absurdist as a story like, well it's zombies I mean how much more absurd is as you in want? if you go back and watch those early films they almost seem a bit Probably, Funny now. right? Well, it's a comedic tribute, like I said, and it's okay. the story of a bunch of strangers holed up in a farmhouse in rural Pennsylvania, USA, as hordes of the undead approach. Ooh. Now, it's written by Christopher Bond, Dale Boyer, and Trevor Martin, directed by Benji Sperring. We have seen Benji's other work. We saw Holy Crap at the King's Head. Check out our review for that. Yep. But he also directed Toxic Avenger at the Southwark Playhouse, which transferred to the Arts Theatre. Oh, that was and pretty huge. And you can huge. watch it on Broadway HD as well. Yeah. So you can watch it in your own home. And that, that was, was big. big. It was popular. Yeah. Now, the cast includes the fantastic Mark Pickering, who we last saw in Banana Man the Musical. I loved him. Yeah, brilliant comedy actor. great. He's also on HBO series Boardwalk Empire. Ashley Samuels from Fun Home, which we caught at the Young Vic. And and Mike Bodie, who's the creator, one of the creators and founding members of Mischief Theatre, who are responsible for all of the goes wrong yes, things. Yes, they're brilliant pieces of theatre. Peter Pan goes wrong. Okay, bank Play robbery goes wrong. goes wrong and all that stuff. And soon to be magic goes wrong. Exciting. At the I know, right? Two hours including the interval, so pretty swift this one. Now, we've been warned that we're going to be sat in the splatter zone. Have we? And I didn't know this. clothing, or at least things you don't mind getting ruined, are at least sort of advised. There is on-stage seating for this as well, in which they provide you with a full boiler suit to protect your clothes. So we to expect blood. A little bit of interaction. There will be blood. That's a thrillery horror film, isn't it? I don't there know. will be blood. I don't watch blood. them, I'm frightened. That was a Daniel Day-Lewis. Anyway, stick around, and we'll tell you all of our thoughts at the interval breakdown, see how we're getting on. And also to the end, to find out how many stars... We've come to the interval, which means it's time for the Breaker Leggers 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. Oh, what, what do you think? think so far? I mean, it's okay. I mean, I, I, I'm loving some of it. I'm loving some of the creativity. I'm loving the set. I think the lighting is superb. I'm liking the bold costume choices. I'm liking some of the performances. Mm, is the staging great? No. Does the script hold up? Meh. What about you? It's mixed. I think the concept is a good idea. The music is great. The lighting is great. It's just very confused. It doesn't know if it's a comedy or if it's a scary piece. Yeah. And as such, it's a real mix. Fellow leggers, have we survived a night of the living dead? How much can we yoke this zombie? I know, right? Let's, uh, shall we drop it? Yeah, drop okay, it. old now. I, th I'm, I would say we've just about survived it, to be honest with you. I don't feel like I've come out into the bright new sunset of a whole new fantastical day. Um, but, I mean campy at times sort of fun what did you think it's a really difficult piece and um, towards the end i was smiling quite a lot yeah it won me over come the very end and we'll talk about why a little bit later there on. was a bit come the second act i was a bit like god this is getting isn't it gags you meant to repeat three yeah. times and it felt as I, if we repeated I it think five I was, or six i was feeling that as well i think the word word is 
tedium. It was just becoming lather, rinse, repeat. And really I really nice concepts though. Yeah, the I, concept was right, but yeah. the execution of it just, just was, then... There was something really lacking. And I think it was focus. Had this have been high camp, total farcical, absolute send up from the get go, then I would have known what it was. Had it have been scary and sort of I don't had a know. social commentary, no, no, no. then I'd have known what I it disagree. was. I disagree. But for me, it's straddled. It's straddled, and I wasn't sure. Okay, no, for me, I think it should have been actors being. I felt as if it was too hammy and too played up throughout. Throughout. Oh, okay. And it should I have been well. because. I, so um, beware. I think we're going to have to give away some spoilers in order to give some kind of degree of commentary on this. Now, so can we beware pause for of a spoilers. Second, we've never seen the film. Never Neither seen the film. Of us have seen but I don't the film. think it matters. But I mean, I think maybe it does because there are mm. moments that are just that seem to be there for being their sake. There's a stuffed weasel, for example, that he's drawn attention to time and time again that bears no relevance to the plot. But I mean, maybe in the film it is sort of something that he's focused on. I don't know. So maybe if you know that, it would become funny. But however, so spoilers, mm. if, if you've seen the film, then maybe get... Anyway, anyway spoilers. Yeah, I mean, it's been around since 1968, guys, so we're not giving anything new away, surely. Um, so the way it works is they look at alternative endings, mm -hmm. and I think the comedy is in the cast having to do the alternative endings again and again and again and again, like, like oh, the, I'm flustered. The tedium, the tiredness, yeah, and the sort of... Yeah, and yeah. that's where the comedy is. Mm -hmm. I think trying to play it up, trying to make something more funny, is almost as if this is funny, so we're going to play it's, this funny. It's counter-effective, isn't it? Yeah, it, it almost didn't work, and I think that's where they missed the trick okay. for me, and if they did that, then it would have worked. Because yeah. we weren't getting elements of that mm -hmm. in the second act. But hey, okay, so what else do you want to say about the picture? So they're a bit of a mixed piece, but yeah, from the, the very end, they've got a genius ending. They do have I a genius ending. I was thinking, where, where is this going to finish? Let's talk about it now. So do you ever get to those <laughs> end of that shows and you leave and you think, oh, could have done with a tap number? Well, bloody hell, do you get one here? You get a full stage musical number at the end, full with sort of sharp, angular, fossey style chorus line almost movement. You and get it really great works. voices because a lot of these have got musical theatre background. Yeah. And it's a complete camp fest. It's for the first time this is it's funny. Night of the Living Dead live. Yeah. And I often say, do you know what? P things build themselves as musicals and they should just say live on stage. For the first time, I thought this should be a musical. And they should build themselves. I could see it being a funny musical. But hey, that's that's away from it. But the musical number really made it. It really and swoops in in the second act to lift it. it really okay, does. I've got to say this now as mm, well. Okay. You were saying that you could see a lot of this cast in Reefer Madness. Now, and I, that's what you think yeah, Benji I would Sperrin this, should direct next. I mean, it's, it's right up Benji Street, and I'm sure it's already on his radar, but yeah, absolutely, Mark Pickering would make an amazing Jack. Um, I think that um, uh, Tamap um, Hethian, we'll talk more about these people later, could easily pull off Jimmy. I mean, his singing's not the strongest, but he would be fine. And Jennifer Harding would make a great May. You uh, but, can cast Reefer Madness and, from this. Um, you Why said are we not this, seeing that? You Where's said Reefer this, Madness? You said this I'm in the angry. interval, and you said, but you don't, I don't know if they could sing. Yes. So then I suddenly I thought, knew what, when they had the sing, musical number, it. that you would be going, yes, it was Reefer like, Madness. It was like an next. audition for Reefer Madness for me. Like, had I been directing that show, I'd be like, great, let's get it on, guys. So I thought, just drop that in there yes because um that's how you're probably quite excited when they started singing i was but the real star of the show for me was the design and the lighting yep. and, and sound design as well the way they which worked. really stood out in the first act yes of the sound and lighting so designer diego pitarch we've got lighting by nick farman soundscape designer composer samuel west and sound designers jane nicholson and paul gavin um, my god do you sort of lift this show from sort of a mediocre script to dizzying heights of production values in a small space like this being something worth commenting on thank you um because everything was in it was as if it was a black and white movie yeah, so it's monochrome. It was all gray no doubt yeah monochrome and it was really effective from the set yes also to the makeup yes. to the costumes yes so really nicely put together which again when they then jumped into the musical number at the mm -hmm. end they suddenly introduced color yeah and it was just a really nice touch really yeah. clever let's let's give a little shout out to wigan makeup supervisor holly slick uh, 
um, sil sorry, <laughs> Silka, just to say well done for keeping them in fine shape. Yeah, really, because they, they look really amazing. They were really good. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And I also, I think I want to give a nomination. A, a 2019 Break a Leg nomination? I think I'm going to give two. Two nominations uh, yes, for... Yes, designer to Diego Picarch and the best lighting for Nick Farman. Well, there you go, fellow leggers. Boom. How about so that? So definitely something worth seeing in this production. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I guess we should have a look at direction. Yeah, I mean the staging for me was a, a bit messy at times, and things were. If you're coming to see this show, I would recommend ban B seating or less. Don't shell out for premium seatings. Don't be sat on stage because you're going to miss so much of the action that goes on behind you to the extremes. And also, we were sat in really close to the front and I felt a bit sort of cheated by the fact I was in a premium seat because I couldn't see through the onstage audience to what was going on on the stage. It almost feels like they've directed it. Um, they've Sorry, they've blocked it in in the rehearsal space, put it on stage and go, oh, this doesn't work, oh, it's a bit late to change it now, oh, we'll just have to stick with it. That's how it felt. Yeah, some of the sight lines were pretty messy. Mm. There's some lovely gauze work where some of the offstage scenes are happening behind the gauze, but it's at the back to the side. But because you have on stage seating, mm -hmm. They block the view, yeah. so you, you're masked by it. And even those on stage, because they're on a lovely revolve that spins around, nice touches of, it's all of set design, people are having to spin through and yeah. we're having to look through Which and it's is just distracting messy. distracting as well. Um, I would say nothing ahead of the fifth row back is worth sort of is worth the money. Which is, oh, I hate saying it, but it's true. Yeah, once you head to the rake, then yeah. I imagine you'll be able to have better sight lines mm. and see through. So if you're coming to see the show, further back is better, guys. Band but B. some of the best moments, comic moments, were the audience getting splattered. And Watching the, um, the on stage audience members yes. who are in their overalls. Yeah getting splattered and we had a lovely girl who was terrified who was great to watch I mean, in the first that's act that's a dream really she, isn't she it? was like on the, on the edge of her seat and she jumping and stealing looking, the show stole the show I mean for talk us. about upstaging I mean bloody hell her reactions were worth every penny of the admission price she moved for the second act she did she, funnily enough she wasn't in her, in her seat <laughs> right on the stage in the second act let's she move on to performances on. yes Ashley Samuels as Ben oh it's fine yeah yep, good, good stuff good Jennifer Harding as Helen and Judy I think she's got the toughest gig here to be yeah, honest with you two parts she's on and off on and off and, and they again, make a that's real where joke it would have that, really worked with her, and they began to tap into that with her kind of coming on with the wrong wig or yeah. in the wrong costume towards the end that's the where the comedy too should be too little too late right? too little too late but she was great but she is great now giving a good bit of tongue action oh my we... goodness what a snog I've never <laughs> seen such a snog between her yes and who was it Tom character the Tamar Het Het Hetian. Hetian, I think that's how you Nailed say it. Nailed it! Um, they were both great, but boy, yeah. what a snog they had. Yes. Uh, proper um, tongues and everything. Now, let's bow down to Mark Pickering here. Nobody does Mark Pickering better than Mark Pickering. Mark Pickering is just a, com he's I a just, comic genius. It doesn't genius. matter what he does. No. He's just born to be funny. I just love him. I want him to lighten my life. From his teeth to his face to his voice to his he, he physicality is, to his intonation. He is a natural comic actor. In the right part, he's great. Yeah, and I loved him in this. He was perfectly cast. I mean, I loved him in Banana Man, but I loved him even more in this because he gets an element of sinisterness as well. But he played a villain. A, a bit of a what? Sinis sinisterness. Sinisterness. Yeah, sinisterness. Okay, fair enough. Mary McGinley as Barbara. A very difficult character. She just annoyed yeah. me, but it's not the performance, it's just the part. Yeah. Was just, and I guess it's part of the writing at the time. Was it 1968? They keep saying it again and again. Yeah. She's just a wet. No substance. Nothing about and her. Typical sort of woman in peril she plays. And a bit psychotic, Doesn't get I guess, a lot to, to a do. degree. I mean, I always talk, I call her catatonic. She's yeah. scarred by what she's been through, but, but and played very that way. one level, I yeah. found. But she uh, did a great job with that, yeah. but I didn't like the character. Yeah. The big star of the show for me, Mike outside of Mike Bodie yeah. as Chief McLean. I thought he was brilliant. He, he has such brilliant. a commanding presence. Yes. He's, he's just really good. I loved he him. Is great. Again, and he played that straight role, getting frustrated mm -hmm. with what was happening, which I yeah. guess is more of his background yeah. coming from mystery theatre, right? Yeah, and I when saw a huge wrong, amount of mystery. Like those sort of, you know, the character, those big, bold, sort of awkward characters. Yeah, like trying to make things work. And come I on, guys. I saw that in him. And 
he was great. And yeah. there's one scene in the second act where he kind of tries to take control, and suddenly the whole thing lifted from there, yeah. almost pretty much to the end. Yeah. So he did a great job. He did do an absolute great job. Okay. Um, so anything we want to say about the writer? I mean, great vision. Apparently the original movie is a social commentary as much as it's a horror film. I guess and, we're going to have to see and it. And I, I think I would watch it now because I'd want to see that with its sort of bold strokes on what it is to be a woman at that time and, you know, how serious black people were taken. And there, there and is the a bit of... Does make, there is politics yeah, in it. It does make that commentary. They're not uncovered that, that greatly for me. They're not no. sort of explored to the depth I would want them explored to. But then again, are they supposed to be? Because this is a throwaway piece of theatre, is it? Well, is that I, what we would call it? Gosh, that feels harsh. I think the concept, I think they've tapped into a good concept mm. of this is the story, but what would happen if we changed the ending mm. or changed how it played out and then going back and back? The concept is good. Mm. It just doesn't land. land. It doesn't land. It, at some point it just gets a bit, oh, an un, and isn't, isn't gelled enough. An ungraceful or, dismount. <sighs> Get me. Well, I guess anyway, you're probably wondering how many stars we are going to give Night of the Living Dead, currently playing here in North London at the Pleasance Theatre. Breathe. We are going to give... Three! Three stars for this piece. I mean, it's okay. It's, it's a, it's, it is what it is, guys. It's nothing to be taken too seriously. It dipped into a two at times where it felt say, it was saggy and for boring. A lot of it. Yeah. But that final musical number really does elevate it. Like I say, if in doubt, back in a bit of tap love. <laughs> and it really but made it, a difference. Really did, they are. Um, I, I, and just a, saying. I think for the right audience, this would do well. I always mm. think like early teens. Yeah. I think that that audience would enjoy it quite a lot. Sort of what? Toilet humour? Maybe. It's a bit toilet humour, it's a bit... And it's not too scary, no. but it's just enough. Okay. So I wasn't I, frightened I and I hate horror. I wasn't scared. Early on, I thought the music and the lighting really made a tense atmosphere and then mm. it, it was gone. Okay. And then it turned into kind of farcical stuff. But that's just what I think. And that's just what I what think. What do you think? Have you head down to yeah. the... I've got to say, it's a lovely theatre. Really nice really theatre. Really friendly the as well. The bar is great. Yes. It's been on top of a bar I as spent well. spent a lot of time lovely here. Lovely lighting. I'll definitely check this space out again. Prices of the drinks. Reasonable good. for London, very reasonable. Very so yeah, head reasonable. down to the Pleasant Theatre. But like I say, let us know if you've been here before or you're planning on coming here anytime soon. We'd love to hear from you. We're the Breaker Leggers. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.